Good Thursday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Jim, let's begin with Facebook's earnings. Yeah, Facebook was just a tour de force. I mean, this is one of those situations where they have two billion people who work for free for them. That's the monthly average users. That's a good pipe for what will happen to the daily, which is 1.3 billion. Remember, there's only 7.4 billion people in the world, so that's quite an achievement. It's important to remember this about Facebook. They have more demand than they can handle. That means they have more advertisers than they can handle. High quality problems, so therefore you realize on the conference call, when Mark Zuckerberg says we're gonna have to start monetizing Messenger a little faster than we'd like, it's a good sign for shareholders. Action Alerts Club members know this. We've owned it for more than 100 points. Wow, all right, and how about Twitter? Twitter's disappointing to some degree, only because it ran so much, but uh, uh, the monthly average users, okay, not great. Daily average users gain. I would point out that there's a decline in the loss of revenue, uh, and I think that the stock, if you can get it at 16, 17, is a buy because they're beginning to mine the data. I know that one of the things that's so hard about this industry is there's, it seems to be winner take all by Facebook. Uh, Twitter should be doing better. Uh, they've had so much operational issues to clean up. Once they've cleaned them up, I think you'll say it was a buy. All right, now Jim has over a million followers on Twitter. Jim, what would you do without Twitter? Well, probably <laughs> have a happier marriage. My can't, oh. wife can't stand it. She thinks it's a total waste of time. Thinks it's just ridiculous. Only likes it when I post pictures of my dog, and she doesn't even like the fact I call, I call my dog Nvidia. <laughs> but she says he really only answers to Everest. Why don't you drop that whole thing? So she wishes I'd get off it quickly. Wow. It's a total waste of time. She well, hates it. What it's about the garden? Uh, she doesn't know those pictures. Um, <laughs> she just looks at the how intrusive it is and just wishes it had never been born. Okay, then. Hey, different strokes, different folks. Hey, moving on to Comcast, a holding of actual Earth Plus. Yeah, you know, Comcast is interesting. Uh, there's a great piece by uh, Moffitt Nathanson, which is a firm I follow, which called the, the earnings unspectacular because they're always spectacular, and that's why the stock's not up a buck. There's also too much speculation in the stock that maybe they're gonna buy Disney, maybe they're gonna buy someone that's put pressure on the stock. It's a, got a, it's a profitable growth situation with some very good ads. I think Comcast is a victim of the fact of how, how well ATT did, up 5% yesterday, and how well Verizon's doing, up 6%. Both those companies have really gotten back on their game. It's quite obvious that the unlimited for Verizon is working. It's quite obvious that the diversification direct TV is working. It's also why I think T-Mobile did not have more of a reaction when they reported their excellent number. Southwest Airlines getting hit today. Yeah, this is disappointing uh, that it's got hit so much because the stock's now down nine straight points. Uh, we're telling Action Alerts members that this is your opportunity. Uh, I have to tell you, Gary Kelly was on, and Gary Kelly, I think, was basically saying, uh, this is ridiculous. He didn't say it point blank, but they have brought back a lot of shares. They got a great, great situation with, the, with their balance sheet. But the airlines have fallen dramatically out of favor. It may not even matter what he says. I would have liked a few more pennies, but they did change reservation system, and it's just an outright buy. Of the buys that I've seen this quarter that are created by uh, the sell-offs, uh, 3M, I'll put that up, uh, Southwest Air, Domino's. Those are three that just seem wrong to me. All right, what did you make of Procter & Gamble's quarter? Procter & Gamble's a good quarter. Uh, you know, I know that, that uh, Nelson Peltz wants to be on the board. I think he should be added because he brings a tremendous amount of firepower. Jim McNerney's the guy who's really calling the shots on that board. He created Boeing as we see it. Boeing again up. What a fabulous industrial. Uh, and I think that in the end, Procter's doing good enough. Not good enough for Peltz, good enough for shareholders. And on Spark on the Street, you said that Peltz is cheaper than all the advisors. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you have all these advisors from Procter, it's going to cost them a fortune. Just add Nelson. Nelson is a classically good board member with a fantastic research team. Uh, Tryon does great research, and Elliot does great research. These are people you would welcome on your board. All right, Jim, on Stop Trading on Spark on the Street, you talked about PayPal. Yeah, PayPal was uh, magnificent. I want to wrap in PayPal with Citi, which is a, PayPal was a holding of Action Alerts. We had a great profit. We sold it too soon, clearly. Um, Citi is a credit card company. Uh, Citi uh, is saying on air yesterday when I was interviewing Mike Corbett that online is just the uh, place where it's 100% credit card. And PayPal is a becoming a dominant credit card uh, player. Uh, don't forget they just did a deal with Bank of America. And don't underestimate the deal they just did with Baidu to be able to be in China. Dan Schulman remains a man who conquered everybody, uh, PayPal goes hard. Jim, that was a fabulous interview with Michael Corbett, 22 minutes, and we really got to know who he is. Well, you know, it's important. I mean, I knew Corbett because I was at Harvard Law when he was playing for the Crimson. 
and he was the best player I'd seen since my sweet mate Dan Jiggets, who went to the Bears. So I always kid him about about his football uh, because I watched him play the best offensive line that I've seen since Jiggets. Uh, he could have been drafted. Instead, he went to Solomon Brothers. Uh, he has revitalized City. City should trade at a dramatically different price to book. Right now, it trades at one times. If it went, Obviously, if it went to J.P. Morgan, the stock would almost double. It's not going to happen. But this stock is on a slog to go to 100. It won't be done immediately, but we're a shareholder in it for action alerts. And we tell the club, hold on. It's coming. Wow. All right, Jim. Let's end with some earnings to watch. We have Chevron. Chevron's going to be okay. I mean, you got the Royal Dutch and Total did well. The oil stocks are still, until oil goes through 50, which I don't think it will, the oil stocks are remain in purgatory. I still go back to what Paul Kibsgaard said, which is that the oils are going to start having a better year in 2018. Chevron will put a good face on it. And what about Exxon? Similar story? Exxon really is, uh, you know, they, they have a 50-year plan. They're not looking at the stock. There's this buyback stock that's kind of like a bank. Uh, and I do think that in the end, uh, Exxon is a company that is, uh, you never got hurt buying, but is not anything that I feel compelled to recommend. We continue to believe that Apache is a company that either will get bought or will start showing great earnings. They've got the lowest finding costs. Uh, Simrex is the fastest grower in the Permian. We own Magellan Midstream, which is a fan, absolutely fantastic revenue, uh, just a great income generator for an income seeker. Um, but you know what? The oils are still wrong because when oil gets to 50, our future, the future selling is humongous. We're enjoying the ride up a little bit here after suffering with the oils for action alerts. Uh, so we got Southwest is not going our way. We got Apache right now not going our way. We've got um, Simrex not going our way. We have to deal with these issues. The way I tell club members is patience, patience, patience. Remember, we have over a hundred point gain in Facebook. Why patience? We have a similar gain in Apple. Why patience? Google, Alphabet, people decided they don't like that anymore. That's an opportunity. Southwest will prove to be the same. Ah, great advice. Jim Kramer, thank, thank you, you so much as always. And for more information on the stocks in Jim's portfolio, head to actionalertsplus.com.